Welcome to Biology My Passion. I'm Saumya Harikrishna. We will continue improvement food resources, animal husbandry. Today let us discuss fish farming. Fish is the cheapest source of protein, that is animal protein which is better than plant protein. So we have different ways of culturing fish. So mainly two types of fish are being farmed or used. One is finned true fish, the typical class spices, the fishes. Whereas second category is shellfish. They are not actually fish, but they are also used as seafood, like prawns, oysters, mollusks, etc. Now, how can we get fish? Because it's a natural resource. It's not that something we are making. So there are two ways of obtaining it. One is capture fishing. If you are directly going to the natural resource, maybe a sea or inland water, and we are capturing fish. That is called a capture fishing. Where second part is called a culture fishery. Sometimes to increase the yield of a particular kind of fish, we may have to culture them or farm them. That is called a culture fishery. So if you are culturing and then getting it, that way of operating is called a culture fishery. Now, depending on the water sources, there are two types of fishes. Some fish can live only in sea water or the marine water, which is salty. Whereas some fish cannot live in that. They can live only in usual uh, land water or the fresh water. Whereas lakes, rivers, ponds, etc. They have the fresh water. So depending on that, marine fish and fresh water fish are also there. Now the way of culture. Suppose if you want to culture and get, there are two ways of culturing in the habitat. That is, we cannot bring the marine fish to our inland water and grow them. No, it's not possible. They will not survive. So if you want to culture marine fish, we have to culture them in the sea itself. So that is called a uh, mariculture and the second is called a aquaculture where we are doing it in inland water bodies. Now let us talk about mariculture. Mariculture means fish in the sea water. India has got 7500 kilometers of coastal line and also the deep sea beyond that. So we have a rich source of fish available in our country. And the main fish from the sea are the pomfret, mackerel, tuna, sardines, bombay duck etc. Whereas certain fish are of high economic value, for example, mullets, bhetki, and pearl spot. Some fishes are cultured in the sea because of their significance or because of their demand. They are prawns, mussels, oysters, pearl oysters, and seaweeds. Due to high demand, we are culturing them in the sea water, then it is called a mariculture. When we talk about the freshwater fish, we actually get them from mainly lakes, ponds, rivers or reservoirs etc. But the yield from the capturing of fish means the natural resource is very less compared to that we obtain from the sea. So most of the time we culture the fish in inland water bodies. We can also use brackish waters. Brackish water means where the sea water meets fresh water like estuaries and lagoons we can cultivate fish. So this kind of inland fish farming is called aquaculture. So actually there is a difference between aquaculture and pisciculture. Pisciculture means it's only the fishes that we are culturing. Whereas in aquaculture all kind of the aquatic uh, organisms we culture including prawns, mussels etc. So uh, freshwater uh, species are there. Now uh, fish farming can be done in different ways to increase our yield. The first is, is in a combination with the paddy field. We know rice is a kharif, season, kharif crop. So kharif crop means water logging condition is required. So during monsoon paddy field is filled with the water. So we can introduce fish also into the uh, paddy field so that along with that the fish also will grow double in, uh, yield the farmer is getting. But we have to ensure that the fish is not uh, disturbing or troubling or eating the plant. Now another way of uh, increasing the yield is composite fish farming. Composite fish farming means using different fish species in the same pond. Usually the fish they don't live in this uh, entire pond or the entire water body. They have their own preferences. Some fish like a cagla, they are surface feeders. They like to remain in the surface. They never go down to get the food. Whereas rohu uh, is actually in the middle zone. They neither come to the surface nor to the bottom. Whereas there are certain bottom dwellers or bottom feeders like mrigals and common calves and also grass calves are there. They feed on the weeds under the water. So if I am using only rohu in my pond or my tank, then rohu will be 
occupying the middle zone, the rest of the part of the huge pond is left vacant. It's actually a wastage. So here we are going for composite fish farming where we can mix up these kind of different species, five or six species of fish we are introducing simultaneously into the pond so that we get multiple yield. But here one thing we have to be very clear that they have different feed habits or feed requirements. Otherwise there will be competition for the existing feed. So uh, if you are managing this properly, you can get good yield from the pond because different all parts of the pond is utilized. That's one advantage. Second is the uh, multiple yield from the same pond. But here there is a problem also associated with it. The problem is most of the fishes or all the fishes, the breeding season is monsoon season. You must have heard that there is a ban on trawling during that time and all. So this monsoon is the breeding season and all the fish produce their fish seed. Fish seed means the egg of the fish. It will be in the water only. So if I want to get it from the for the next generation, suppose I want some mrigal only for the next another pond. I don't know which is mrigal seed, right? Suppose I am thinking, okay, I will get something from the wild or nature also. Getting the mrigal seed alone is not possible. So in such case, we can find a solution for this. Instead of allowing them to breed in monsoon altogether, giving hormonal stimulation so that they will breed at different timings. So once maybe I am introducing some hormones so that cattle will be exposed to hormones. So only cattle will reproduce during that time because of the hormonal effect. So whatever seed I am getting from the pond, all are cattle seed only. So this is how we are solving the problem. So this is a very important question. What is the major problem faced in composite fish farming and how do we solve it? Last part of animal husbandry discusses beekeeping or uh, apiculture. Beekeeping is a low investment project and the income is also comparatively less. So farmers use it as an additional income generating activity in their farm. Usually we are having high demand for honey, but apart from honey, from the beehives, we get wax also. The bee wax is used in many medicinal preparations. When we talk about the culturing, here also we depend on Indian varieties as well as foreign varieties. The Indian varieties of honeybees are AP Sarana Indica, which is Indian honeybee, AP Doseta, which is called rock bee, and AP Flore, which is the little bee. For high yielding purposes, we are bringing Italian variety uh, so that we get more profit. The Italian variety is AP Mellifera. Why is AP Mellifera preferred to Indian species? Four reasons are there. You have to learn two marks, four points, half marks each. High honey collection capacity. They stay in a beehive for a long period of time. They breed very well and they sting somewhat less. Now, the quality of the honey and the quantity of the honey. If you go to the uh, shops, we can see different honey ranges. Color is also different and quality is also different. So, this is because of two factors. One, the pasturage available means the flowers available for the honey collection. It's not only the quantity of the flower, but also the second factor, the quality of the flower available for honey collection. Depending upon which flower is, it is uh, approaching for nectar and pollen collection and how many flowers are available, all these factors are influencing the overall honey production in a beehive. Hope you understood this lesson well. If so, please like, share and subscribe to my channel, Biology My Passion.